Welcome to another video from Guilao 60. Today we're going to be talking about the differences between China and, and the United States. The main differences that I see between China and the United States, and it's got nothing to do with language or communist government versus democratic government or the way people look, uh, their, their, their nationality, their, their race, none of that stuff. It all has to do with their perception of compensation. Uh, their understanding, their goals, uh, their work ethic. Now you're now you're talking the Chinese work ethic. All of these things make China a different place to to live, or a different place to visit. Uh, it amazes me that you get a family, not 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 just uh, a mom and dad, but you get a daughter or a son and they all buy an apartment. Yeah, they all go out and work and they all put money into, into buying an apartment. Housing is super expensive here. And, uh, but it's not like, okay, uh, you're 18 years old, boot, get out and uh, get your own life, go rent a place, find a husband or a wife, uh, start your own life together. It's not like that here. The perception of, of family is, is super, super important. Um, I see in the West, uh, you get uh, the Trump era. Okay, well let's let's pick let's pick on the United States because 39% of all my viewers, the largest group of viewers, are from the United States. I have no idea how many of those are Chinese and using a VPN, but we'll we'll pick on the states. Okay, uh, Trump got into power here three years ago, stating make America great again. So what, what the States is looking for is the old glory days of, I would imagine because of his age, about the, the 1950s when you could buy a house for probably $10,000. People were making a buck or two an hour. The, you know, the, the house with a white picket fence, all of these things were within grasp of your normal American. The, everybody saw that everything is going to be better tomorrow. Up until, up until uh, these last 20 years, that, that banging in the background is uh, them building the subway. They're, uh, here I'll show you. That big sucker there, she, she's digging holes for the subway. Sure. China is noisy. So, and that's that's how that's how Donald Trump got into into power in the United States is because the majority of the Americans were were looking and saying, "Oh, things are getting worse, not better." They would never have voted for somebody like Trump unless they were looking for something different, something that would maybe make it so they thought that tomorrow would be better than today. Well, the opposite is, is true in China. Uh, every Chinese person I talk to thinks that tomorrow is going to be better than today with the government that they have in place. And it's not because of the government, it's because of the people, the work ethics. They get up in the morning. There's, there is no social welfare program that will pay a family of four and then their family and their family and their family six, seven generations where nobody has ever worked in that family for six or seven generations because welfare will pay your way. That doesn't exist here. You have to have a better work ethic in China than, than you do in the States or in Canada. Oh, if, every, if every Canadian worked like the Alberta oil workers, the people that work in the oil on the oil rigs in the in the oil patches of uh, of Alberta. If everybody worked as hard in Canada as these guys do, then Canada would be a great country, uh, a prosperous, uh, a rich country, richer than any other country in the world. Why? Because we got the resources. We don't have a lot of population, but we do have a large population that are on welfare. They're they're too lazy to work. They, 
why, why should I work? The government will take care of me, buy me an apartment to live in. Uh, I, it's sort of like early retirement. You hit 18, uh, you can apply for, or even probably 16 if you got a kid. Now you got family allowance for the child and a welfare check. You got her made for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? Here, it's not like that. People have to work and it's bestowed a, a, a really good worth ethic, work ethic into the people of China. And I see it every day. And, uh, you know, people will, sure. But then that guy goes to work and works for 12 hours, shoveling whatever sand or, or dirt or whatever. And uh, so what? He's a little rough around the edges uh, socially in a Western way of looking at it. But that boy, he's tough and he works hard to take care of his family. That's one of the main differences between the Western world and, and the Eastern world. Uh, but mainly China that I see is that the people here will actually go out and work. Another big perception, uh, difference in, in perception of, of compensation. See, when people go to work, even the working people in, in Canada and the United States go to work, they expect to be paid 20, 30 bucks an hour. I want uh, 12 six day, sick days a year. I want three or four weeks holidays. I want this and I want dental and I want, oh, it's, it's, it gets to the point where it costs, well, that's just, that's why a lot of the companies can't make it is because it, it just costs too much to hire people. Here in China, what do they want? They want a wage. They, they want enough to, to support their family. They don't want sick days. Well, I, I would imagine they probably do, and yet I know the union guys out there are just going to be shaking in their space boots when, I, when they see this video because there's no unions here, guys. Oh, no. You, you try to unionize. You're down the freaking road, and somebody else has got your job. Oh, yes, that's, that's the truth. So there's... You know, people want enough to go on the Caribbean vacation, all-inclusive uh, Caribbean vacation for a month in the winter time. People want to be able to afford uh, a, a, a nice car, a boat, a snowmobile, uh, all, a cabin at the lake. Everybody wants more and more and more. See, we're the Chinese. They want an apartment for their family to live in. They want enough food to... To, to eat properly. They want their children to have a good schooling. Uh, they just want to be happy and healthy and, and safe in their environment. They don't have all of these pipe dreams of, of Caribbean vacations. They don't want, they, they don't even think that way. It's, it's, it's one of those things that, it's a big difference between the two countries. Because of this work ethic uh, and, and uh, the way people work and do things, um, wages are, gro are growing. Um, transportation is easier. Life, life is better in, uh, is getting better for the regular person in China. Uh, the, the schools are getting better. The, the air, the air and water is getting cleaner. Like you, you look at Beijing five years ago and you look at it now, it's totally different. The Western world doesn't see that because they listen to the Western media. The Chinese people see it. Look at, look at Nanning today. This is a seven million person city. You get a seven million person city in the Western uh, world, LA, places like that, and you'd have a brown haze around the city. Here, no brown haze. Why is that? They're working on it. Lots of EVs, lots of electric vehicles running around the city now. Uh, all of these big buses are on natural gas. There is no diesel on, on city transportation anymore. A lot of the, the stuff has moved to electric subways underground. Oh yes, life is getting better here. Can the Americans say that? Obviously not, because they're trying to make America great again, not still. Or you know what I mean? Like there's there's that difference in perception, and and it all comes down to the work ethic and and what the people see as important to them. And in China, it's different than it is in the States or Canada or Europe. It's it's just different. You don't have 
tent cities here. You don't have drug addicts hanging on the street. You don't have, well, you got thieves, yes, you do, but they're not, they're not stealing to uh, put a needle in their arm. They're stealing uh, before spring uh, festival so they can go home to the farm <laughs> so they can visit their family. Yes, it's all about family here. It's, it's a different world, guys. And I think it's a better world. And it's getting better and better all the time. And it's got nothing to do with government. It's got to do with the people that work hard every day. Because if half of these people were on welfare, nothing would get freaking done. And that's what the problem is with the West. The perception is, oh, they'll pay me. They'll get, they'll, oh, if I get sick, yeah, healthcare is free. Oh, if I need a home, well, that's free too. If I don't pay my power, the government will pay my power because it's 40 below. They can't let us uh, freeze. They can't let my kids starve. Then you've got the food banks and all that other shit. It's, it's enabling the, the people that are just too frickin' lazy to get off their ass and go out and work to not get off their ass and go out and work. Eat, eat, eat potato chips, drink Pepsi, and get fat. And have more babies, yes, because Canada needs more babies. They need more babies from the working class people that will teach their children how to frickin' work rather than how to be on welfare, how to build the system for the next 10 generations. Here, you're not gonna get that. You see, the people in China are happier. I walk, I walk around and drive around Nanning all the time and I see more people with smiles on their face here in a day than I've ever seen anywhere in the Western world. It's just, they're happy. They're, life is, life is freaking good for these people. Uh, they've got more than they had yesterday, last year, 10 years ago. Uh, it's, it's one of those things. It's, it's a lot like it was when I was growing up in, uh, in Canada. 40, 50 years ago, you know what I mean? And uh, where, where people had hope for tomorrow. They had, uh, they, they liked their neighbors. You could leave the keys in your truck. All, so you don't lose, where are the keys? Well, they're in the ignition of the truck, of course, uh, because nobody's gonna come and steal your stuff. Well, you don't want to do that in China. That sucker be gone in five minutes. But that's, that's just the way it is. Uh, there's no violent crime here. Well, none to speak. I've, very, I've never, well, I've seen one. one. One time where two guys at a fish selling thing at the wet market went at each other with filleting knives. Neither of them won. But in uh, over 16 years, that's the only violence I've seen. Sure, they yell and scream, they shout at each other, they, they fight that way, but not physical violence. But getting, I regress. Uh, so you, you look back, you know, 50 years ago in, in a place like Canada, where people worked hard, they were proud of their jobs, they were proud that they, they made their own money. If they were on welfare, they would be uh, humiliated because, damn, somebody else has got to take care of me. Something's gone wrong in the West where this is socially acceptable now. And uh, over here, uh, it would be the same thing as 50 years ago. If you were on a freaking welfare or a tab of some sort, if that even exists, and I don't think it does, um, it would be humiliating for that Chinese person to admit that they were on welfare. They, if you don't make your own money here, you don't feel good about yourself and maybe that's part of it that if you're working hard and you're taking care of your family you feel better about yourself and that's where the smiles on the street come because not only are they happy uh, about themselves they're happy about their families because their life is getting better for their families and the future looks good here where in the west yes I'm back to Kent City um, Seattle Oh my God, what a freaking shithole that place has turned into. Uh, it's, you know, you get into places like San Francisco where you've got miles and miles of tent cities and drug addicts and just, and like, like shit on the streets and stuff like that. You think China has a problem with dirt. That's, that's disgusting. That is just disgusting. So this, 
and it and it comes down to the people. It's not the government. It's the people. If these people wanted to go out and work, they could. There's jobs. There's McDonald's. Sure, you're not making a lot of money, but there's still jobs out there. You don't have to live in a tent with a needle in your arm. Over here, if uh, a Chinese person was given the option of making 15 bucks an hour at a McDonald's in, say, Victoria, British Columbia, or working for their little R&B here, they'd probably take the Victoria job up until they saw exactly what it was all about, and then they'd want to come back. I know a lot of Chinese people that have moved overseas turned around to come back to China. Why? Because they miss it. This is their home. There's, there's, there's a future here for them where in the Western world they see it disintegrating and, and so do I. I guess what this video comes down to is, you know, the difference between the West and, uh, and China is that the Chinese people are, are actually willing to work for everything that they get. Sure, they want more for their family, their, their themselves and their family. Sure, just like everybody else, they want more and more and more. But the difference is that they're willing to go out and work hard to get that. They're willing to send their children to uh, good schools and pay the price. No free tuition. Oh, my, uh, my student loan is too high. I can't afford to pay it because I can't find a job. Oh, you could find a job. It just maybe not in the field that you went to university for. Uh, you've got all of these excuses why you can't get something done. And that, that drives me up the wall, seriously. Uh, here, they don't have excuses. They, they, they just say, oh, okay, I can't, I'll do this instead. And they go ahead and do it. Whether they're uh, uh, flipping burgers in McDonald's or they're making soup in the soup kitchen or they're shoveling gravel for making cement, whatever. It doesn't matter just so long as they're working, making money, helping their families uh, do better. The, the kids work hard at school and it's not a nine to five job. It's nothing like that here. I know lots of people, I, I call them at nine o'clock at night, they're still at work. Why? Because they, they work hard, they want more for their family. The harder they work, the more they make, the better, that they, the better they can do for, for their family and uh, their children and a, a better education. Their children can have more extracurricular activities, uh, go to more classes. It's, it's, see, in, in, in Canada and the United States, if it was like that, we would be thriving. We have resources. We don't have super population. We have, we have such potential to take it to that next level like Norway has. But we choose not to. Why? Because we enable the people on welfare. Oh, you poor baby. Uh, you, when you can't find a job, here's a couple thousand dollars. See you next month. Oh, you still can't find a job. That's bullshit. Find that bastard a job and, uh, you know, you're 24 years old and you're on welfare and you're healthy? No, no, no. We can find you some wood to cut uh, or we can, we, can, we can find you a street to sweep. We got people who sweep streets here that probably don't make a lot of money. But you know what? When I talk to them on the street, they've got a smile on their face. Why? Because they're working. They feel good about themselves. And that's another video from Guilao60. As always, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, push that share button, hit the bell, and uh, don't forget to hit the bell. Oh, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye now.